I'll let you say it. Starts with S, ends with Uberu. <laughs> Welcome back to Tangents Gymkhana Specials. And today, we're talking about the cars of Gymkhana. So you want to start from the beginning? Uh, sure, 20% want... of my career of Gymkhana <laughs> videos. Has you want to say that dirty word? It gets I'll everyone so it. excited. I'll let you say it. Starts with S, ends with Uberu. That was eight, nine years ago. Yeah, and people still are upset. Eight videos later, only two videos were done in that car. Do you want to answer why we went to Ford? Sure. For the for eight years in a row. Hey, I, I had a I had a great time racing with Subaru. Uh, the Vermont Sports Car Team was a great team to work with. Amazing years racing with Travis and Colin McRae. Like there was cool was opportunities there. But I wanted to go on and do different things, race different places around the world. And Ford had one of the best rally cars in the world. And so the opportunity to not only expand beyond the U.S. but do it in one of the best cars in the world was incredible and they've been Subaru a, was no longer racing in the WRC yeah it wasn't even an option yeah and and Subaru put together a great offer for me to stay in the states and do stuff but I wanted to expand and I've had a great career partnered with Ford racing rallycross racing WRC you know making Gymkhana videos and specialty vehicles mm -hmm. like the new Huna truck and the the amazing Fiestas I've been racing so it's been very cool doesn't mean I don't appreciate all the sponsors that I've worked with all the great teams I've worked with because mm -hmm. I truly do so before Ken crushed all your Subaru fanboy dreams <laughs> Subarus were, were quite awesome for Gymkhana and the first one has actually quite the story because it has a back history that we probably haven't shared much to people we told we talked about it in zero to 60 magazine at one point but that car is actually how ken and i met because originally that car was the gumball rally car oh yeah they weren't a race car they weren't even that heavily no. modified of a street car they were like pretty standard to what kids drive on the street it was like a decent tune they were like probably about 400 horsepower at the time yeah. and pretty mellow well we wanted so we had to go 3,000 miles we wanted something reliable yeah after that you and i did one lap of america well, yeah we did one lap of america a bit more power good wing that's when we yeah, put yeah. the big carbon fiber wing yeah. on it and then the car got converted to be the Jim Connor one car Yep. So it got more modified, but it wasn't a race car. The most telling part of that is at the end of the video, when I get out of the car, you hear a ding, and that is because there's still a key in the car. And it's still in the ignition. There's no roll cage yeah, in that there's car. No roll cage. And that was a, a build that wasn't meant to be a race car. No. That was like a, a nice street build that was meant to just go do these Gymkhana USA events that were happening in Southern California. So I just needed like a a modified streetcar. You just... were driving to the event. No trailer, no pickup truck. You were just like Oh, there driving. was a trailer for that. Right. Oh, there was? Oh, okay. It I, wouldn't have passed smog in California I still at that have point. the seats from the one lap car. Oh, uh, yeah. So that car was built to do Gymkhana USA, which was a series in Southern California at the time. And then as soon as I had built the car, it never even made it to a Gymkhana USA event because mm -hmm. they just quit doing events. So I had this fun car, but nothing to do with it. That's why I went back and made basically yeah. what is Gymkhana one. It's originally called Gymkhana testing and practice, but without Gymkhana USA stopping doing what they're doing, there would be no Gymkhana one. So thank you. Thank you <laughs> for- Who was that? I forget who it was. Uh, it was Ken Tuck. Uh, I don't remember. I'm not, I'm not going to butcher someone's name. It was. You're welcome to. It was. <laughs> insert here. <laughs> but that event is when I really was like, yeah, I'm going to build a car. I need to do this more. Because, mm -hmm. simple backstory, I wanted to slide rally cars around on tarmac like I saw my heroes do uh, in the WRC. In Rally America, and still to this day, there is no tarmac rallies in America. They're all gravel or snow. That was my inspiration for the Jim Connor mm -hmm. stuff since day one because I didn't have a stage rally here to try that on. Mm -hmm. So the Jim Connor USA events gave me the opportunity to learn to do that and do it more and more. And when I started doing it, I was like, ooh, this is fun. <laughs> That's all the sort of things that led up to what is the Jim Connor videos today. Next car is the next gen Subaru STI, which was like the 2008 model, right? The hatchback. That's the first purpose built Jim Connor car that you did. Yeah. Well, and the funny thing about that too is once again, built by Crawford. Yep. 
because back then Vermont Sports Car was the team that was running the rally team that Travis and I were part of at the time. But Jim Connor back then was still like, oh, that's that weird thing that got a bunch of views. Subaru still didn't have anything official to do with it. Vermont car, Sports Car was like, yeah, we do the racing. You're doing right, that. Right, 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 right. Let someone else build that yeah. car. So we'll, Crawford. We'll do your donuts with yeah, someone else. Yeah. <laughs> so Crawford continued to build the Jim Connor cars for right. us. So they built me two. Even the Jim Connor two car once again had a WRC wing. So that's when Subaru was still racing in the WRC and the rally team here in the States were not using the expensive carbon fiber right. bigger wing at that time, but we bought one from ProDrive and put it on the Gymkhana 2 car. So it actually looked a bit different yeah. than the rally cars that we were racing in Rally America at that time. And that one had a bit more horsepower too, right? Yeah, because stage rally, you're restricted by certain so I'm rules. It had more horsepower than the Gym 1 car, right? Wasn't it like a little yeah, bit Yeah, it was a bit up? more built. So yeah. the Gymkhana 2 car actually has a cage as more professional rally type seats. It's put together more as a nicer package that looks more like a race car, even though it still was not built to any sort of yeah. specifications to go race anywhere like Rally America. So it's still built to be quite light. It's a very nice package. But it still was essentially a street car, heavily, heavily, heavily modified yeah. to a race car. Where the Gym 3 car is our first, which you would really consider like a body and white car, which was built from the shell up. Yes. Right. So. Let's introduce Jim 3. So Jim Connor 3, the Olsbergs built that car yeah. and it was based on their rallycross car that they were competing in Europe with. And we went to them and said, we want a very specific Jim Connor car. And they did a ton of lightweight stuff because that's where they started bringing more trick stuff in. Andreas Ericsson at Olsbergs actually really took his time and built me an amazing was, car because he took everything he knew from rallycross and basically took all the stuff out that you didn't need because mm -hmm. we weren't racing it in a sanctioning body that had really tight rules. So it was really light, really simple. It was really fun to drive. It was the first Gymkhana car to get a bespoke handbrake. Yep. And we designed that original block handbrake yep. for that. Ford wanted us to build a four door. And in Europe, everyone was running two doors. So, right, we had to build. Mm -hmm. So they actually had to build a four door kind of bespoke entirely for us just so, because they didn't sell the two door here, it made more sense for us <laughs> to have a four door. And this is from my perspective behind the camera. It was not as aggressive as the cars that came after. It just didn't have that wheel speed and all of that. But it looked like the most nimble. The ability to like work around a cone and be super tight. I don't think any car we've ever had since then was that precise. It wasn't as violent. Yeah. And it wasn't as like angry as the other cars. Yeah. But there was a precision on that car. And I think it, some of that had to do with the lightness of the car. Another thing it had to do with was the basis of that car that was a very good vent winning rally mm -hmm. cross car that was being raced at the world level. The problem with it though in the beginning is it actually understeered a lot. So we actually had to work a lot with the setup in the beginning to get more get forward bite with it. We did a lot of work. Yeah, because I could get it sideways and then it just kept wanting to understeer out of things. So we actually went back and tested the Jim Connor 2 car at one time because I, I kept thinking, what's wrong with that car? Is that how Jim Connor 2 drives? Yeah, I remember that. You know, because it was my first year with Ford and I was like, wait, I need to compare apples to apples. We were eventually able to dial the Jim Connor 3 car in to act more like I mm -hmm. wanted. I just wanted to drive more from the rear and use more oversteer, but get the bite from the front. But in the beginning, it was just biting too much from mm -hmm. the front. But that balance though is what makes it act and look the way it does on camera, yep. that it was very nimble but it took a bit to get that balance front to back yep. from the beginning. So Jim Connor 4, Bert, HFHV. Yep, which was kind of another Frankenstein car, yep. but worked really well. We decided to move away from Andreas Ericsson and do our own thing in house. We took a WRC Fiesta, tried to do three things with it. Rallycross, Stage Rally, and Gymkhana all in the same car. Mm -hmm. And so Gymkhana for the video was the first time that we actually put all the Gymkhana components on it. Suspension, turbo, because it's a different turbo, all the mapping and all that. We basically ran out of time and basically went right into the filming and it was very hard to drive for that video. And I think that's the first, yeah, it's the first Jim Cotta video with 1552. Yep. So those were like prototype wheels yep. that were actually built a little too strong. Too strong. You know, we started filming that video and some of the first sequences we were filming were actually very difficult because I'm adapting to a whole new car. I'd yep. driven the car a couple times before that doing other things like rally cross or rally, but this was the first time doing Gymkhana. We were struggling with engine mapping, mm -hmm. anti-lag and some of these things just weren't dialed in yet and it was a bit rough. Yeah. It worked, 
we got stuff done, but the, it was a very interesting tough thing one. about that car though, which I always thought was really cool. And this wasn't as much about Gymkhana, but about Rally was at the time WRC was racing a 1.6 liter engine. And it actually would not have been competitive in Rally America because the open class cars were running way bigger engines. So we built a two liter motor for that. So it was kind of like the hyper version of a WRC car. Because it was all the suspension and everything of a WRC car, but it had an even faster engine in it. Right, well we, we used the WRC Focus engine because two liter was the standard for Rally America, two yep. liter was the standard for Rallycross, and of course it would work well for Gymkhana. That car went from Jim Connor 4 right to Jim Connor 5. Yeah. So well, by the time that we used it for Jim Connor 5, we'd ironed out a lot. We'd been then using it for a year, a year and a half. We'd ironed out a lot of the issues that, that we were having yep. with it. And really, by the time we got to Jim Connor 5, the car was dialed. I had a lot of time in that chassis yep. and a lot of time doing different things with that car. So when we went to make that video, it was on. Yep. But you can see my confidence in that car. Part of what makes Jim kind of five really good is I wouldn't be able to throw the car into some of those situations, especially like the jump drift, if I didn't have the confidence in myself, in that chassis, in that setup that I, that I had. On to the next car. Jim Connor 6. Correct me if I'm wrong, M Sport saw what we did with the HFHV, saw what we did in terms of competing in Rallycross, and decided that they wanted to build a proper Rallycross car. It wasn't Somewhat. so much of a decision on their part. Well, uh, we wanted a Rallycross well, car too. Well, yeah, but we liked working with them. We were already using the, the Fiesta chassis that they built for WRC, and we just said, look, if we could take the Fiesta WRC car from its basic standpoints and modify it with you guys, we could make a great mm. Rallycross car. So we worked with them to build that Rallycross yeah. car. And then the for Gymkhana 6, it was that car just modified, you know, with suspension changes and, mm -hmm. and uh, mapping, that sort of thing, a bigger restrictor to be the Gymkhana car that it is. The one thing I love about Gymkhana 6, though, is how aggressive that car looks, too. Oh, yeah. Just so poppy, because because by then, instead of making a car that can do everything, we've now got a very purpose-built yep. Rallycross car that's already 600 horsepower. Yep. You know, it's already built very sort of heavier parts to handle Rallycross. And so jumping and doing everything that I do in Gymkhana 6, it just was aggressive and worked really well for them. And it was also the first time we had turbo fans on the car. That was just visually one of the coolest things, like watching the smoke pour out of the turbo fans. It's still one of my favorite photos of all time. Yep. Is just that one shot with the smoke pouring out of the turbo. Which is fans. actually from SEMA. Whatever. <laughs> it's still the turbo fans. <laughs> it, it is. All right. So I think this is kind of like the one that, to me, probably one of the best cars we've ever built the Hunicorn. And the so, Hunicorn has a long story. Well, it's a very long story. But first, you just have to tell the story of the name. So the name came because we need, when we were building the car, we needed a code name because we were working with a ton of different suppliers and vendors to help us with the project. So we just called it the Unicorn. Like this is how we saw it. We were building the Unicorn. Right, and it was something so unusual and so yeah, out there. It was, it was so kind different. of a dream, dream project. So Unicorn, it was unicorn. funny. And then at some point that morphed into Unicorn. We never thought that was going to be an outside name. That was an inside joke. And we just kept calling it Unicorn and eventually it Seems like stuck. something like you or Ron would say, yeah. like as a joke, yeah. you just combine the words and like, oh, that's funny. And then we move on. We didn't, like the truck was much harder to name. <laughs> as you can see, we yeah, didn't yeah. get that far. <laughs> yeah, but that, that one just, I love when stuff like that happens so naturally. Like mm -hmm. it was something really unusual. Yeah. It was something like almost unachievable. Mm -hmm. and, you know, a dream type thing. And then it just morphed into the Hunicorn. Now it's our standard. Like the best name that we have of any vehicle is the Hunicorn and everything gets compared against that. Yep. Yet that name was kind of an accident. And the car took almost two full years to build. And we were, we kept it secret forever. Yeah. That was and, the and hardest that, secret to keep. And not just to build, but the design. We partnered with Von Gitten and his brand RTR because I wasn't a Mustang expert. And I needed someone. And he had built that, the RTR X, yeah. which we thought yeah. was really cool. I needed to partner with someone that could help navigate the Mustang world, the engine for that. Yeah, in we the weren't, world. none of us were V8 people that yeah. was in our world. And so there were a lot of complicated things there that Vaughn kind of really helped us through. Even to the point of like hiring the right illustrator to help mm. my ideas and his ideas come together to make the right yep. image. You know, once we got to the right image, then his 
team at ASD started working on it. But it was really Vaughn and his drive and his knowledge of Mustangs and the engines and everything that, that really brought all that mm -hmm. together for us. So thank you, Vaughn. There was a lot of struggles through there. The, the build was not easy. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, our team had to come in at a certain point late in the game and really help them finish it. And even as we started filming Gymkhana 7, I had had a short testing time in the car uh, with no body panels and all mm -hmm. that that I flew out to Charlotte and did that test. And then the night before we started filming Jim Conner 7, I got like five minutes in a parking lot near downtown LA. Next to, to Hoonigan, next to Hoonigan's original spot, yeah. we borrowed our neighbor's yard. Yeah. Because the so, our yard was too small. Yeah. Did some donuts around like a cone. And that was my testing before I started Jim Conner 7. It was painstaking to get all the proportions of the car right. I mean, yeah. do you remember how much time, because we had a bunch of actually different artists draw things up. Yeah. And I want to say in the end, it was myself and Lindsay Ross, who was the creative director at Hoonigan at the time, who designed the bigger panels for the fenders to, because I've seen other people build Mustangs like the Hoonicorn and they look awkward if you don't do things right. And it was, right. it took us a long time just to get all the proportions right. And it's still this day, one of my favorite looking and sliding cars I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, it was one of those things that we set out with a very high bar. I think that the car actually exceeded expectations. Oh yeah. We wanted something that was really unusual, an all wheel drive, high horsepower Mustang that looked like a Hot Wheels car. I wanted yeah. something that my kids would play with. And so to combine all those things into one vehicle is actually really hard. And to have it perform, actually exceed right. my expectations, that's insane. Like it's, I get asked all the time, what's your favorite car to drive? And I, I'll say hands down every time, the Unicorn. The V8 power matched with the all-wheel drive system, which is the car that's really soft and, and really easy to maneuver around. But at the same time, once I lean on it, I say I want to go that way and really fast, it mm -hmm. does it. And that's really unique. The, all the other cars do that, yeah, but yeah. not in the way and the feel that that car does it. The other thing too, it was like taking all the coolness and rawness of a muscle car and giving it the agility and the control of a rally car, which you'd never seen before. Yeah. Like you've seen people slide muscle cars around and they're kind of cumbersome and they don't they don't have that, you know, and there was something really cool about taking that rally car nimbleness and putting it into the you know, into a muscle car. Yeah, but that was the first time we got to try one of your ideas. Oh, chaining it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I had begged for for years. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, that's dumb. <laughs> and then finally, I was like, you know, it makes sense here because we need to tell people this is all wheel drive and what yeah. better way to do it than watch all four wheels spin. It's some of my favorite footage we've ever shot. <laughs> <laughs> I might be biased. <laughs> Jim Connor 8. But eight, eight, 8 is the RX 43. The only thing I really have to say about it is, once again, we've kind of had the car for a few years now. Mm -hmm. It's really dialed in. We did some wild stuff in Jim Connor 8. You can see in the driving, like I'm really confident in the mm -hmm. car. That was a really fun one to film. Was, wild as Dubai can be. There was a lot of wild behind the scenes. Wish we were making Jim Conner files, but we made that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there was some good stories. There was some moments. But we also added like the reflective livery. Oh, it was yeah, black was on really black, good. reflective livery. One of my favorite liveries ever. Mm -hmm. We also put in, because it's Dubai, the gold plated handbrake. handbrake huh? You know, that one was just fun. It was yeah. just a, a wild time. And doing that stuff with the idea of how wild Dubai can be from having the 747 mm -hmm. to getting one of the richest hotels down there to let us use their front courtyard. It was just really cool. Once again, the turbo fans, yeah, you know, the turbo back. fans came back, um, but this time it mimicked the design of the wheel behind it, mm -hmm. but with reflective. All right. So Jim Conner 9. That's yeah, so Jim Conner 9's the Ford Focus RSRX. That's the car that Ford built us to race in World Rallycross. So that was the year that we started racing World Rallycross, and it was Andreas Backerud and I racing. And it was a really big struggle of a year. But at some of the best driving you've ever done was Jim Conner 9. Well, you know, the funny so thing. You can't talk bad about that I, car. No, no, no. The, the funny thing that I'll tell you on the backstory of that is I struggled with that car because in the beginning it really drove like a front wheel drive car. Yeah, yeah. So I'm a rally driver. I want to use the rear of the car and really trust the grip of the rear of the car. And that car, because it had double wishbone suspension, which we don't have on any other car that I drive, mm -hmm. I really struggled with the feel of the rear of the car. But by the time that we got to making that video, which was late in the year, We'd made a bunch of development changes with the car. Mm -hmm. You drove that car like an absolute madman. And Ron and I were like, I think he came out there with like something to prove. Cause like you pushed that car so hard. That or you wanted to crash it, but, but <laughs> you literally drove the tires off that car. 
filming Jim Connor and I. Yeah, well, I, I think it, when I was doing that, though, I was so mad because <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't getting the results that I had with the Fiesta the year right. before. So we developed the Fiesta over many years, and I was so confident with it. And then we changed the platform to the Focus, and it was just a bigger car. It was a different chassis mm -hmm. and a totally different suspension, and I was just frustrated. And it, it, that's how race cars go sometimes. And uh, when we put the suspension on it, stiffened things up, gave it more power for making Gymkhana 9, it just worked really well. I've heard you say it's one of the best engines you've ever driven. Yeah, and Ford Performance developed that engine. That was the second engine that they developed in-house besides the Ford GT engine. So right. it's like the Ford GT engine and then our and then Ford Focus <laughs> Rallycross engine was next in line. So. Uh, it really was a great engine, and Ford actually continued to develop that engine mm -hmm. through the two years that we raced that car. It really was a phenomenal engine. So that leaves us one last video, Gymkhana 10. So Gymkhana 10 is five cars, five locations. Some of these cars are repeated, like the Hunicorn, but now Except a different version. Yeah, yeah, with twin turbo. We go much more in depth in the build of these cars, like the Huna truck in Gymkhana Files. So watch Gymkhana Files to, to get all that info. And That's it. That's only 10 years of history. Yeah, just condensed. Condensed into, into a really small package. Which and there's a lot more too, but we can only fit so much in here. And that's not even like all the other rally cars and other things, it's just some of the cars. All right, that's it. This is where we get up and walk away. The other thing too, it was like taking all the coolness and rawness of 